Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. In this video, we are going to solve the last problem in the chapter number 6, microwave transistors and tunnel diodes here. So in the family of microwave transistors, we have addressed the microwave bipolar junction transistors along with the hetero junction bipolar transistors. Then we had the JPEDs, metal to semiconductor field effect transistors. Then we also address the metal oxide field effect transistors. And in all this particular family of microwave transistors, we have solved several of the problems. Now, previously we are just finished with the charged coupled devices and in the previous video, a simple problem has been considered here. Let us have a practice on to this last problem so that we can conclude the family of microwave transistor and address the tunnel diodes in the next lecture. So here the problem statement is provided. It is the N type 3 phase surface channel CCD stands for the charged coupled devices has the following specifications that it is N max is equal to 2 into 10 raised to power 12 per centimeter square, epsilon suffix IR is equal to 3.9, D is equal to 0 0.15 micrometer, A is equal to 0 0.5 into 10 raised to power minus 4 centimeter square, P is equal to we have 0 0.67 milliwatts. In the part A, we are asked to make computation for the insulator capacitance in the farads per square centimeter. In B, determine the maximum stored charges per well in the coulombs. In the C, find the required applied gate voltage in terms of volts. And in the D, choose the clock frequency in terms of megahertz is the problem statement. Very first of all, the five parameters, those have been provided as given details in the statement, we shall be identifying. The first parameter that has been represented by Nmax that we shall be identifying first of all. To look at the measurement unit, it is per square centimeter and it is nothing but the electron density. So I mention here electron density and provide the given value as 2 into 10 raised to power 12 per centimeter square here. The next value represents the relative dielectric constant and this is with respect to the insulator. So insulator epsilon R I mentioned the value is 3.9 here. After this dielectric constant value we are provided with the dimension of length D. So it is in terms of micrometers and nothing but the insulator thickness. So insulator thickness is equal to we have 0 0.15 micrometers here. Next to the D insulator thickness we are provided with the variable denoted by capital A. So capital A is nothing but the cross section of the insulator here. So I mention here insulator cross section is equal to the value it is 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 centimeter square as it is the area here. Next to this area we are provided the capital P. Capital P is nothing but the power dissipation. Power dissipation per bit here. So this is equal to 0 0.67 in terms of milliwatts. Now we get back to the problem statement. So after identification of all the five parameters, we are able to compute the insulator capacitance in terms of farads per square centimeter and the further details. So here for part A, we write the insulator capacitance by C suffix I and compute it by the ratio of epsilon suffix I divided by D here. So epsilon suffix I can be 3.9 into the epsilon 0 that it is 
0.854 into 10 raised to power minus 12. This is divided by the dimension d. So this length is 0.15 into 10 raised to power minus 6 for the micro. So this computation gives the insulator capacitance value C suffix i as 23 into 10 raised to power minus 9. So this is in terms of farads per centimeter square. We can also write the insulator capacitance C suffix i as a 23 nano farads per centimeter square. So we outline this required answer for part A. So after the determination of the insulator capacitance in terms of farads per square centimeter, we determine the value of maximum stored charges per well in coulombs here. So now for part B, the maximum stored charges are denoted simply by Q suffix max and they can be computed by making the use of N suffix max as identified from the problem statement in multiplication to the electronic charge Q into the cross sectional area of the insulator that is capital A. So this gives the next step by substitution of 2 into 10 to power 12 in place of n max into 1.6 into 10 to power minus 19 in place of q and 0 0.5 into 10 to power minus 4 in place of capital A. So this results into the q max is equal to 16 into 10 to power minus 12. So as Q is the charge, we measure it in terms of coulombs. We can also represent Q max as Q max is equal to 16 picocoulombs. So I outline this particular answer for part B here. Now after determination of the maximum stored charges per well in terms of coulombs here, we go for finding the required applied gate voltage in terms of volts here. So the required gate voltage into the part C can be represented simply by Vg and it can be computed by making the use of again n max into Q but divided by C suffix i the insulator capacitance that we have determined as answer for part A. So here we can make substitution into the numerator 2 into 10 raised to the power 12 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 divided by the answer from part A it is 23 into 10 to the power minus 9. So this results into Vg is equal to 14 volts here that can be outlined as the answer for part C. So after determination of the answers for part A, B, C we go for last portion that it is choosing the clock frequency in terms of megahertz. Now the clock frequency for the device for part D can be simply denoted by F and it is the ratio of capital P as denoted divided by N into Q max into capital V here. So we can put the values P is equal to 0 0.67 into 10 raised to power minus 3 and this is to be divided by 3 into 14 into 16 into 10 raised to power minus 12 for the Q max V is equal to 14 we can make and this gives us 1 into 10 raised to power plus 6. So as this is the frequency we put it in terms of hertz or simply we can write F is equal to 1 megahertz. So this is the outline for the required answer in part D here. So this way we are covered with all the values to be computed into the problem to charged coupled devices. In the next lecture we shall be addressing the last topic of this chapter and it is titled as microwave tunnel diodes. I hope you enjoy the microwave engineering in this chapter. We dealt with the various microwave bipolar transistor family.
and now the tunnel diodes are to be addressed so for more details and more knowledge you can subscribe to ekda channel thank you